during the midst of this pandemic, private schools were consistently open when public schools were consistently closed. We're giving 700 plus billion dollars as a nation to public education and we can't keep our doors open and we give pennies on the dollar to private schools and yet their kids are thriving, not just surviving through the pandemic. We are grateful to have Senator Tim Scott of South Carolina join us for the annual Leadership Conference. We're coming to you from our Capitol Hill headquarters here at the Heritage Foundation. Senator, you have some opening remarks you wanted to talk about with regard to school choice. Thank you, Robin. Let me say to the Heritage audience out there, God bless you. What you all are doing is so incredibly important to protecting conservatism throughout our land. God bless you for that. The issue of education could not be more important. I will say as a kid who grew up in poverty, single parent household, I went to four different elementary schools by the fourth grade. I understand and appreciate the importance of quality education in every single zip code in America. The closest thing to magic in America is quality education. It is the great equalizer. And so I look forward to the conversation that we're going to have, Rob, about the importance of education, because if there is a civil rights issue today that we've spent too little time on, it's the issue, quality education and education reform in our country. It is the issue that allows for each and every family living in poverty today to believe that the American dream is alive. It is well and healthy and coming their way. I look forward to the questions. Thank you, Senator. And we appreciate your passion for this issue. You mentioned zip codes. So yes. much of American education has been based on zip codes in this country. You have legislation called the Choice Act, which would give parents the choice to make decisions that really empower them to go beyond kind of the traditional way we think about it. Can you explain what it would do? Certainly. The, the, the Choice Act really focuses on giving parents a choice so kids have a chance. It's something that's been said a thousand times in the space of education reform, but it's true. The more we focus on giving and equipping the parents with options, the more likely their kids are to realize their full and maximum potential. What the legislation does is exactly that. It provides parents with more options in their portfolio to make better decisions for their kids. And it doesn't matter whether you are a parent living on a military base, God bless those who put on the uniform to serve our country, those kids in those households perhaps may need some options. Think about parents who have kids with special needs. I have a couple of folks in my office who have special needs. Uh, having the right education platform for one of my employees named Patrick, I want his parents, lovely people, to have the ability to choose the place that is best suited to make sure that Patrick realizes their full potential. And we also focus on kids that's the Title II funding are the kids with special needs or the IDEA funding. So we also focus on making sure that other parents as well have an option to see that their kids realize their full potential. I'm glad you brought up military families. Uh, obviously, we know that military families are often on the move. Yes. Uh, sometimes they're placed, uh, their kids are placed in underperforming schools. What would it mean specifically for them when they maybe get relocated to a new community? Rob, you know, I'll tell you, um, Folks who go from base to base every two or three years, it sounds very comfortable sitting in a wonderful environment like, like, like where we are today. The truth is for a lot of parents, a part of the butterflies they feel in their tummies, it's what will happen to my kids in the next place? Will there be good schools, bad schools, schools that are far away? What, what, what the Choice Act does is it starts a pilot program that allows for certain places just to study the opportunity and open the door of opportunity for parents in the, on that the base to be able to send their kids to the school of the parents' choice, as opposed to, unfortunately, there are a lot of bases that are right where we need them to be to protect us, right where they need to be to train our soldiers, but they're not necessarily in, in, the, in the best place to educate our kids. The Choice Act gives the parent 
a different kind of arsenal. Gives them the arsenal of choice. That's great. Well, right here in Washington D.C., there is a landmark program called the D.C. Opportunity Scholarship Program. You have been a strong advocate for it, as long with my colleagues at the Heritage Foundation and many other members of Congress. So far, since its foundation in uh, 2004, it's served 10,000 students, yeah. probably more than that, who have gone on to a better life as a result. Absolutely. Can you speak about this program specifically and what it means right now with the new administration in Washington? Will will we be able to save it and keep it going? Well, two very important questions. First question, what it means to those 10,000 plus kids. Let me say it in a way that is st statistically verified. If you go to one of the DC Opportunity Scholarship schools, the chances of you graduating, around 93%. You go to one of the other public schools, closer to 50%. The chasm between those two educational pathways for a lifetime of earning is in the millions of dollars. So it means a whole lot to the 10,000 plus kids who have been equipped with the opportunity to reach your full potential. Uh, I'm glad that we've been able to keep that program running for the last nearly 17 years. And also it means a lot for the, for, the, for the community and for the nation. It's tremendously important. So here's the question, your second question. How do we, with this new administration, protect school choice across this country and specifically here in DC? It's gonna take folks like Heritage to stay engaged, to be a loud public voice on behalf of kids who sometimes they feel speechless, sometimes they feel invisible. Uh, what you all can do because of this conference is to empower folks here in D.C. to keep making the right choice in a bipartisan fashion. Uh, it is unusual uh, in the year 2021 to talk about bipartisan support, but the D.C. Opportunity Scholarship has had bipartisan support. I just wish the entire nation had bipartisan support on issues around providing kids with the best education and not bowing the knee to labor bosses running unions. Well, they certainly should. And I know you and I have had both the opportunity to hear some of the incredible stories coming out of people who've benefited, particularly students who've benefited from these programs. And Absolutely. so it's just incredible. True, true. You know, Senator, as a parent myself, somebody who has two kids in elementary school who spent most of the past year at home and are not only back, that. <laughs> back, back uh, two days a week, I know that COVID and some of the changes that we've seen in education over the past year are on the minds of a lot of parents. Yes. How has that impacted school choice in a, in a positive way in terms of giving parents more options as they seek to get around maybe public schools that aren't necessarily performing at the level that they think they should? Absolutely. Well, well Rob, one of the things that's really important to note is during the midst of this pandemic, private schools were consistently open when public schools were consistently closed. We're giving 700 plus billion dollars as a nation to public education and we can't keep our doors open and we give pennies on the dollar to private schools and yet their kids are thriving not just surviving through the pandemic what this pandemic has done <clears throat> it has raised the heat it has raised the temperature in the room around school choice in a good and positive constructive way for us african-american parents have never had a higher approval of school choice than they do today. Uh, Hispanic parents, of course, white parents, all parents see this differently because you look like an incredibly smart person. I love the tie, but here's what we know. Not every single parent is designed to be a homeschool parent and a homeschool teacher. We're asking our parents to do some things that they may not be equipped in. If you're a parent like the one I had, an amazing, loving mama, she can't be at work and at home. So school choice has become more and more important because of the pandemic. And frankly, we can now see more clearly because of the pain and the crisis that we've just endured. And I hope it's opened people's eyes who may have been skeptics before. What is your message? You talked about the importance of this being a bipartisan issue. It's really a common sense issue. Yes. How do we convince those who may be skeptical about school choice if I've heard things from teachers unions or, or big labor right. about it in the past? What's your message to them? Well, I would simply say, 
If you want kids to have the brightest future, if you want every American to achieve the American dream, one of the most important foundational stones is education. We have an opportunity to, to do the right thing, not for adults in education, but for the focus of education, the kids. School choice, whether that's public, private, virtual, charter, or homeschool, gives the parent the arsenal necessary to win the war of their kid's future. We should all be participants in creating that better future. Well said, Senator. Thank Thanks so much for joining yes, us sir. at the Annual Leadership Conference. We're grateful for your work on this issue, and we look forward to staying engaged. Thank you, Rob. Appreciate your work. Thanks for watching the Heritage Foundation's YouTube channel. With more than half a million members, we are the nation's largest conservative research and education institution. We believe the principles and ideas of the American founding are worth conserving and renewing. Please help us further our mission by subscribing to this channel and sharing our videos with your family and friends.